We're about to do an integral that looks very innocent. Uh, however, it comes from 2.9, which is the hyperbolic trigonometric section. And it may not be obvious where to go here in that section. So let's flip back to the book. Here we are. I'm in, already in 2.9. Now, I'm gonna scroll down a little more. Da, da, da. Uh oh, I may have gone past what we need. Sure did. I want some antiderivative formulas. Oh my goodness. Here they are. They're not in a box. Uh, I'll just zoom in. I'll put them at the top of the screen and zoom in a little bit. So these are the, this is the summary right here. I was expecting it to be inside of a box. It's not. That's fine. Uh, we do have one of these forms, but it's not obvious which one we have. So what I did is I copied and pasted these five into uh, my note page here. Uh, I would have written them, but it would take a while. If it was only one of them, I would certainly write that. Now there's something else I want to warn you about. If you go back in your book a little bit, there's some really similar looking uh, antiderivative formulas. They all have, almost all have square roots and some u squareds hanging out with some plus or minus some a squareds. They're really similar. Uh, for example, uh, the one that is tangent inverse right here is super similar to hyperbolic tangent inverse. The only difference is there's a subtraction instead of an addition. Okay, so which one are we working with? Somewhere in here. All right, we're actually not really exactly working with any of them. However, we're kind of working with this one. So let's keep that in mind. There are two choices here. Uh, if one doesn't work, as you type it in, try the other one. Uh, the common one is just go, by default, just go with the tangent instead of cotangent. If you scroll up a little more, they're not written in your textbook, but there's alternatives to these three as well but I don't want to go into those. Okay, so I'm going to write, rewrite the one we want to use, and then we'll figure out how in the world can we make this integral fit into that form. All right, first major problem, there's a stupid nine right there. If you have a better table of integrals, there's ones that have a squared written right there. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't have a better integral table, so I'm going to show you the hard way to get rid of that with a more simple integral table. Okay. What we're going to do is factor it out. And the first thing you should think is, well, there's no way to factor that out. That's okay. We'll do it anyways. So what do I put here? I have to unmultiply by a 9. Uh, you can check if you multiply your 9 in, you'll get back exactly to here. So I factor the 9 out. Now that 9 is a constant, so it comes out as 1 9th. Okay. I don't need that parenthesis in there anymore. All right, so we're getting close here. What is the difference? Oh, we got a one here. That was the that was what we just accomplished. We have to get a u here. Okay. Uh, and the whole entire u has to be squared. So we have to retreat the eight ninths. We treat the eight ninths in a different way. I'm gonna write it as square root eight over square root nine x whole thing squared. Now, when you multiply, when you have a, a, a power into a product, you can just distribute your power to the three parts. Uh, and you get 8 divided by 9 x squared. So you get right back to there. Uh, of course, square root of 9 is 3. So we'll rewrite this. Integral 1 over 1 minus square root 8 thirds x whole thing squared dx. All right, 
now we're actually in the right form. All I'm going to do is a u sub let u equal square root 8 thirds x. So du is square root 8 thirds dx. Uh, we don't have a square root 8 thirds dx, so we'll multiply 3 over square root 8 to the other side. All right, and we will make our substitution now. Uh, we have an extra constant here. All right, easy stuff. Uh, the three and the ninth can cancel out a little bit. So we have one over three square root eight. Uh, now, oh, everything is perfect. Look at that, tangent hyperbolic inverse u plus c. All you have to do is unsubstitute, and that is our unsubstitution. And bada bing, you'll be done, no problem. All right, the other problems could appear as other integrals in this table, so don't assume they're all gonna be uh, hyperbolic tangent inverse. Uh, you're likely to see any of these other ones here. And in general, they look a whole lot like the other ones way back in chapter two somewhere. So just be mindful, there's actually nine formula, eight formulas that you could possibly need here.